This is One on One. You're looking at uh, Stacy Colon, a math teacher at Burlington City High School. Stacy, good to see you. Nice. Thanks for having me. This is part of our classroom close-up series. Mm -hmm. We're doing in cooperation with our partners and friends at the New Jersey Education Association. Mm -hmm. Before we see this clip, you, you, wait a minute, you're using Survivor in the Classroom, the, the reality series? Absolutely. I thought it was a misprint. No. What are absolutely. you doing? Well, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the show, and I am always trying new things. You have to, to stay alive and to stay fresh in education. And one year, I was talking about the show with a friend of mine who also teaches there, and we we're talking about how wonderful it was because it stays fresh and it's innovative and it's always new, and that's what we need in education. And we just, it just kind of dawned on us one day that, you know, we should do this in class. And so we do. We run challenges in class. It stays all year long. It's a great motivator. And uh, we just incorporate a lot of stuff into different challenges. You ready to see a video clip yes, to make it real? I am. Let's go to Classroom Close Up. It speaks for itself. Believe it or not, these students are preparing for the high school proficiency assessment in math by competing in a survivor-themed competition. This is about as close to the way it works on the show as you can get in the classroom. All right, first question. Survivor on television is a reality show. About 20 or 30 castaways are shipped out to some exotic location, and they get put into anywhere from two to three to four tribes, and they'll have challenges. Sorry, that's a miss. I'm a huge fan of the show, and there's another teacher here who is also a big fan of the show, and every day, we'd always come in and talk about Survivor. And one day, we were like, we should do that in class. In the beginning of the year, we randomly make tribes, and what happens is every week or so, they come in, and there's some challenge set up. And the answer is? Four. Four. Let's start with the red tribe this time. Where do you want to go? F4. 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 Oh, you hit another boat, you can go again. E6. It's a hit. E3. And with that, we took out one of the green team's boats. But as in life and school, the tide can turn suddenly. And by the end of this round, the Red Tribe had lost, which meant that they had to vote one of their own off the island. Sorry, I have to do this. Even if you're voted out, you're still in the game. And then just like in the show, at the end, you vote. And I remind him of that constantly. I'm like, you have to vote someone out. Be careful. At the end, these people are voting for the winner. So the kids are aware of that, and it kind of helps them with their social skills. They're very competitive in nature, and as soon as we found that out, I mean, we just completely took advantage of that. And, and they're having fun in math class. The nice thing about this is it, it doesn't become, you know, mean-spirited competition. It's always fun. All we need to do is find the height, yeah. and then we'll have it. Is it unit squared? I see one, two, three, four A's. Very good. It is A. <laughs> it integrates everything we learn in geometry or any of Ms. Cologne's classes into a fun way so that it makes us look forward to it. And sometimes a lot of kids actually study for this so that we can get the questions right because it's so much fun just to try and beat out other kids in our class. You can see immediately who the competitive kids are, and you pull them aside, and you go, I love the energy, I love the competition, I don't want you to hold it back. You do know that you have to be very nice in this game to win, and in this class to do well. I've had classes that did not function well in other situations that do beautifully in Survivor. So I'm very proud of these students. How much fun are you have? I have so much fun. Uh, and honestly, that's one of the reasons why I do it. I, I mean, survivor and teaching in general, because it's a lot of work, and the survivor's a lot of work. I mean, it's not an easy thing to put together, but it is so much fun for the kids, and it is so much fun as a teacher to do that and to be able to go home and say, I had so much fun with my kids today, and they learned so much. You call them your kids. I call them my kids all the time. In fact, uh, a lot of people ask me if I have kids because I'm telling stories about my students and I say my kids. I'm like, oh, my kids are making fun of me today. And they're like, oh, you have kids? And like, well, I have students. I have about 100 kids. But yeah, I do. I call them my kids. I think of them as my kids. And they're high school kids. How but, hard was it convincing um, the establishment, the bureaucracy, the... That this would work? Yeah. The thing is, um, when you're a new teacher, it may be a little bit harder, but 
the, the establishment is actually incredibly supportive and my principal has been incredibly supportive and he in fact is now telling other people that you know, you maybe should go see what Stacy's doing. There's a lot of controlled chaos in her room, and it's controlled really working. Chaos. That's what he calls it. Controlled chaos in math class is a great thing because usually you see a little too much apathy and um, you know lack of on energy the part of... on a part of the students mostly in a math class. And the more energy you can get, even if it is you know through an activity like this, the more you can then feed that energy into the math. It, it needs it, it. It needs the energy. Why did and you so go into teaching? Very supportive. Why did I go into teaching? I and did you know that you were going to use Survivor as a teaching tool? No, I never knew I would use Survivor as a teaching tool. I, I couldn't have imagined it. It's crazy as a teacher. You find things in the craziest places. You're not you're not looking for activities necessarily, and you just I, I could use that. I'm going to try that next week. Um, but I just went into teaching because I like to help people, and I think that if you're good at something, you should share it with other people. Because I think in general, the world is a collaborative place, and it survives because of our ability to work together. And this game shows that. And the way it came about between me and other teachers, you know, talented teachers in the school shows that. And that's really why I went into teaching. I was like, I understand math, mm -hmm. and I love math, and I wish other people could understand why I like math and why it works for me and it's fun for me because they just don't see it. It's not that it couldn't be for them, they just don't see it. And so I thought by going into teaching I could help students understand that. What do you think it does for these young uh, men and women as you know, these kids when they leave? I think it's great for them um, because, and, and I, don't, I can't pretend that I knew this going into it, but it's done so much more than I thought. I thought it would just be a more interesting way to review and practice because that can be repetitive and boring in a math class if you're not careful. And it's done so much more because they are so much better at collaboration and cooperative learning because of this. They're developing social skills that they desperately need in some cases because this is their motivator to want to develop the social skills as opposed to maybe a normal project and it's teaching them to want to learn because they want to learn to do well in these challenges and it's just basically it's it's, it's pushing their academic it's pushing their social and it's it's pushing their problem solving which is a huge thing in, in the young generations. Alright one to ten we got a few seconds left. On the scale from one to ten how much do you love your work as an educator? As an educator I absolutely love it. It's a Come ten. on one to ten you're ten. a math person. Ten. Oh, I would go over but ten. You'd go over ten? With, with these kids yes it's great. It's great. They are so much fun. It's so great to see the, the thanks almost mm -hmm. in their eyes for caring about them and for helping. You're a role model for all of us, especially educators. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, working for great public schools for every child. Wells Fargo, the law firm of Gibbons PC, PSC and G committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. And by Barnabas Health. Promotional support provided by The Star Ledger and NJ.com, everything Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.